history whatsoever. None whatsoever. But but they're sad. legends. Eventually, those legends become icons who don't know anything about their region, and yet they're icons. Well, how are you going to teach the next generation if you don't even know the first houses that helped forge your region? That's part of the problem. People are allowing their positions within the ballroom community to be their tickets to all type of, you know, gratuities from other peoples instead of continuing in the spirit of what it meant to be a parent in the first place or to be part of an LGBT uh, family in the first place, which is to look out and take care of one another. Sitting up watching kids and parents of other houses throw trophies at people on the judges panel, setting up kids on the outside to be beat up. That's atrocious. And to be an icon and standing around and watching someone do something like that and not being able to, you know, take action in that situation, what that does is for anyone in the community, it tells you who that person really is. Because if that person being an icon or being a legend can't control that situation, then that means people are already, but they don't respect them because of his plight or her plight to where they made it within the community. So I believe that those roles are serious roles, despite all the time you hear people, when you hear people arguing on Facebook and all of these other different venues, oh, status don't mean nothing. Status ain't nothing. Well, to you, it may not mean nothing. And if anyone ever tells me that status doesn't mean nothing to them in the ball scene, I'm going to accept that. And when it comes time for them to receive status, I'm going to remind them that they said status means nothing. So if status means nothing, why would an icon entrust you with status when you're also responsible as a legend, as a pioneer, and even as an icon to know the history of the region so that you can eventually teach the next generation? Yes. Like it is. Mm-hmm. Somebody made a little comment. They was like, "I'm sipping on a drink. Forget about the tea." <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting mm-hmm. for that comment. <laughs> oh. So and 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 you know, a lot of things were floating around. You know, YouTube and Facebook and social media. You know, what what is going on with the children and the house parents? You know. Um, in, in the whole intimacy issue What is that How do you feel about that With the whole who House fathers and house mothers Sleeping with their kids Oh my god That That right there really ticks me off And I will tell you That's one of the main reasons Here in the midwest Why I don't get along with a lot of people That have status in this region and that's because during that period, a lot of those people were doing just what I said that they shouldn't have been doing, and that's sleeping with their kids. That doesn't make sense to me. That's incestuous. I usually don't curse a lot uh, at all, but that's incestuous as hell. You should not be sleeping with kids that accept you as their mother and their father. What that is doing is damaging that kid even more. Because what? Because what if that child came from that type of uh, deleterious environment from within their real family, and now they've come amongst, you know, their LGBT community where they can find acceptance and people understand who they are. And now that child ends up joining a house in which because they look sickening or as, you know, uh, the hunters go... You know, the, the kids got exactly what those parents want. They end up sleeping with those kids. What that ends up doing is taking that child back to that same abuse when they were in their real family, and you're setting that child on a path for even greater damage. I, I despise house parents that do that because, in fact, they have no business even being house parents or even calling themselves okay. house parents. In my house... You can even go to my House of Andromeda website. 
there's a section in which we call the cardinal rules of Andromeda. And that cardinal rule is no house members are allowed to engage in sexual activities with each other. Not at all. Yes. And if it's found out, both of them are getting kicked out. Okay. They are both getting kicked out of the house. And any of my house kids will tell you that is exactly what had happened when that was discovered that that was going on with a couple of members in a, one of my other states where I where my house and I found that out that two of the house members they had come they had met while being in the house and they were in, they got caught engaging in the activity when I found out about that I told the house mother of that chapter you need to send them their walking papers y'all can still be friends with them but they're no longer a part of the house because that is not what we do and the reason why I set that rule in place, not only because we all were supposed to be as real family, but also because that is some of the stuff that had always been reported to the Midwest from people that we had made contact with on the East Coast, that all of the East Coast kids and how this, you know, those people were sleeping with each other doing this and doing that. And that was a, a possible result of how a lot of, of STDs and everything else got spread all around and you had whole houses being wiped out because they were sleeping with one another. And that's exactly why I said anyone in my house caught sleeping together, they need to go. Y'all can sleep together outside the house because, you know, it's not going to go on. We're not going to be known as that. So I, I despise that type of stuff. Wow. You know what? And let the let it be known, girls are tuning in. You know, you, you, things happen in New York City, and you follow a trend. And if and you know when it's spread through the the grapevine, honey, the girls do talk and travel internationally, honey. Your tea will be spilled not only all over the table, but on the international table. And that's shade, no tea, no shade, because you got to be a little more cleaner with yourself if you want to be ballroom. How do you feel about? Uh, the I Am Ball and, you know, the whole shade between MC Deborah and, and Stuart, Stuart Dorian, Stuart Eddie. Well, I, I wish I had, had an opportunity to, to go, but, and I don't have too much information on it, so I can't really give an opinion about it, because okay. I really don't know much about, about it. about reading? Yeah. Yeah. All right. And but I will, but I will. But I will say this, that did bring up another point, this concept of state to state. Now, for years, it has always been, you know, the, the Midwest has always been straddled by this, you know, this desire of people to go state to state to make it seem like in order for you to go uh, to be recognized, you have to go state to state and win trophies in all these different states. Right, right. And, I'm going to let you know that has, that has not always been true then and is not always true now because there are a lot of East Coast icons who have never stepped foot in the Midwest and yet they're icons. There are a lot of people in the Midwest who have never stepped foot on the East Coast either. But when, when, when Midwestern, you know, legends or pioneers or icons go on the east coast you know there's this this ugly little saying well we don't recognize their status well first of all the midwest doesn't have to be recognized by anyone on the east coast because one the midwest was allowed to develop and stand on its own in fact to fail on its own because when we when we try to get help to help us figure out how the ball community should be ran, what's the whole concepts of balls. It took a very long time for people on the East Coast to start seeing that we really were real about having a ball scene before all of a sudden we start getting a lot of the trash of people that were running from the East Coast because they were running from their own criminality and they ended up in the Midwest. We never need to go state to state and and they keep on harking this and telling the same story for different ball kids that in order for you to be known, you need to go state to state. No, darling, you do not. If you live within your region, you live within your region. 
Because, again, there are a lot of icons who have never stepped foot in the Midwest. But when someone says to me that such and such is an icon, that person is an icon, the first thing I do, I respect their position because someone else knows them as an icon, and it's in their region. So it would be nice if, you know, outside of Kevin, you know, and... uh and Andre and Tony and uh, Harold, outside of those people, if they would, you know, outside of the names I just named, those people recognize, they see us, they know us. But, you know, you have other people who run their mouths as if the Midwest owes the East Coast anything. And quite frankly, the Midwest owes the East Coast absolutely nothing because if the East Coast didn't help us develop, we had to sink or swim on our own. And they know that, and we know that. Okay, so, so now, now, if somebody is legends in in New York City per se, and they go into Florida, and they claim that they're legends, and then a Florida ballroom scene tells them, no, you can't be a legend here because you're not from this area. You have to work your way to be a legend again in this state. Is this correct? That's that's what we were hearing, uh, as as it relates to. Uh, someone coming from the Midwest going to the East Coast. But that's not, that hasn't been the case of people coming from the East Coast to the Midwest. If you come to the Midwest and someone say that you're legendary for runway, okay, you're legendary for runway because there are other East Coast people in the building that if you weren't legendary for runway on the East Coast, they would let the MC know or the judges panel know and you will look a, a, a rabbit fool. So why even challenge the person who happens to be legendary on the East Coast and they're here in the Midwest? Just because we don't know that you're legendary doesn't make you not legendary. You are legendary on the East Coast. And when you go to another region, it's that region's responsibility to honor that you are in that position and not be shady like some of these people are. Okay, work. Now, let me ask you this. Because it's such a big fuss about this whole legendary, iconic, statement star status stuff. What Mm -hmm. does it truly honestly take? Or how many trophies do you have to win? Or how many balls do you have to win? Or how many years in the ballroom scene do you have to be in to be considered a true legend or an icon? Okay. Now, yes, I, I'm, I'm going to repeat the same sentiment that uh, is it, uh, that Icon Devin uh, Divine repeated last week, and he said it nice and clear. I was glad he said it. You have the newer generation of kids who have jumped on this bandwagon, and when I talk about the new generation, it's kids, people who had come into the scene around 2000, especially in the Midwest region. And so that would be the blue era, correct? Would, that would be the blue era? Say again? Like, that would be in the middle of the blue era because it, it's 19, 1998 to 2000 floors considered the blue era. Am I correct? Mm. Uh, well, we, we don't have it as color-coded like that. For oh. the Midwest, we consider ourselves going into the, the now third generation of ballroom kids. Because if you take 20 years right now... The majority of the original uh, pioneering houses in the Midwest, we have just reached our phase where all of the original founding fathers have now become icons, and that takes 20 years. <laughs> wow. So, so we were always behind New York because, you know, contrary to popular belief, and I'm sure a lot of ball kids in New York don't know, the balls in New York didn't just start in the early 70s and 80s. They were having balls in New York way before that. They were just underground. Right. There was, this the balls one, have been this, going on way before that. Yes. There's this one ball doing uh, uh, that someone made a documentary of. It's called uh, King of the Evening. And it was about, uh, uh, you know, folks doing the, the, the racial area where they were having these balls in back in like these old uh, juke houses in the south, but they were doing it where no one could see them. And those events 
were taking place, and everybody knew about them way before, you know, the ball scene became.